so now that we are able to understand how to communicate from the main process to the renderer let's handle a few tasks which are very common for any ui based application and the one which we will take care of first is a form submission so let's just assume that on my work page there is a form that allows me at this moment to create a simple to do list the idea here is to have that form which is able to submit obviously we will not store that data on the local database but on some api and the ui should also list down the to do items that i have so if i go to my app folder inside source i have pages and i have work so inside work if you remember from our last video we have this code so why don't we get rid of that on click because it is going to create a problem on the submission and we will create a form inside our components folder which we will use to add the to do so let's just say we have a form called to do form it's a tsx file and we will start with creating a basic form in this video so that we understand how things work inside the electron as well so this is my basic boilerplate i already have formic installed so i will create a form which is of type formic okay i don't think i have that so let me quickly do that right i already had the package so i think that basically allowed me to quickly get that now will it give me the hint it is not so let me reload right it is not doing that so formic form is created and we will need two things one is initial values it's an object of type a value okay interface this we will only have a description for now because really we want to understand the working i want to show you that you know the forms are as similar to any react application so yeah on submit right so we have declared the main two things which are required by the formic tag the initial values and the on submit handler let's open a form tag from formic and inside that we will have a field which will be with name description and we will have an error message as well with name same okay and last but not the least we will also need a submit button um let's have it over here inside the form like so okay and with this my understanding is we will get something on the console if we try to do that okay let's see so this is what we have obviously i need to first import this component so to do form like so and then let's try and go to our page right now the console is empty and if i do asdf hit save it does give me the value but now let's just assume that you know, we are trying to submit this information using an xcs call what i understand is if we do it on the front end it is possible but it's a front end call whereas let's just assume for some reason we want to to send some information which the front end is not or should not be aware of right for example maybe some you know token which is like an api key which the front end doesn't have but it is available to the main process as a secret so for such kind of things we should be able to make calls from the main process as well rather than from the front end because in here where is my form i can easily call axios and i can make a post call to my api and that should be perfectly fine but if i want to offload that submission to my main process so that it is done through the backend it is something which we will try to do in this video but before that let's complete 
the validation as well. So I have, I'll install Yup. Quickly come over here and I need to import Yup first and then do Yup object, shape. I think it's required. Let me see. Hmm, something is wrong. Okay, maybe I'll do string required. Okay, so this is what the validation schema is. Why don't we add that over here in the formic tag just to confirm that the form validation works. So I'll try to hit save. It does say description is a required field. So our basic validations are in place. But now, how do we submit that to the backend or how do we send this information to the main process that we are trying to do something like this well the first thing that we will have to do is use the ipc render like we had done or rather the context bridge like we had done in our previous video inside the context bridge what we will do is expose the ipc renderer which is a way to pass events so the documentation says the ipc renderer gives us quite a few functions out of them the two things which we will use right now is the on method it takes the channel name and a function which is the listener and there is the send which again takes the channel name and all the arguments the send is something which we will call from the renderer to the main process and the on is what the renderer is listening to from the main process so this is how things work now let's go to code and see how we can do that so the first thing is we'll again go back to our preload file through the context bridge we will expose in main world something called as ipc renderer okay and what we will expose in terms of functions are two one is the send okay as we saw it takes channel and a data and what we will do over here is ipc renderer dot send send the channel and data okay that makes sense now on the on method will again take the channel oops that's not the diagnostics channel but channel just the channel and let's just say the function or you know the callback function something that we say okay and in here again i'll have ipc renderer dot on channel okay what we will do is send the event any args and then we will call our closure with the args that we got like so so again through the context bridge we are exposing to the main world ipc renderer and it has two main things now again one thing do note that it is not necessary that i have these two as the same name i can write anything over here and that will be the key available inside the window object for me to reference it okay but i'm calling it ipc render because then it makes life easy so i inside ipc render we have two methods that we have exposed the send which takes the channel and the data and it calls the ipc render send function similarly the on which calls the ipc renderer on function okay now with this done we have exposed this so inside the form can we call that function and see if things work properly so the first thing because we are going to use typescript i will create a constant variable called ipc renderer which will be window as any dot and then we will do ipc renderer and then over here i'll do ipc renderer dot 
send i will need to na name this as a channel so submit to do form and let's just send the values now if we are doing this we need to handle that as well so how do we do that let's go to main inside here we will have ipc main which is a part of electron main we'll call the on function and now we will listen for a channel we need we need to ensure that the channel names are correct it is a good idea to even create constants so that there is no confusion i'll call it args maybe okay and then over here i can do args and event so now let's see this creates a problem now if i hit save it shows on the console but this is the front end now what happens inside our terminal can you see we have a console over here the first one is description okay that's coming because we are okay maybe i'll do just the args and instead of arguments maybe i'll do opts that's something which i very commonly use so it will help me understand things better and then say testing send and now inside the console i'm getting that value so as you can see with this what we are able to do is on submitting the form using the ipc render that we had exposed through the context bridge we were able to raise a kind of an event and because that event is being listened by the main process i was able to get the data and so now i am open to handling that particular event in any way required inside the node environment so yeah that's about it guys that's the concept i wanted to explain in this video if you like this video then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel